Well, no, no, no. I object to you getting records. You've been intrusive into people's personal lives. You're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. So, my question... Who got to him? Like, can they actually get at a judge? What do y'all think? So we kind of already had an understanding that Judge McCaffrey was going to rule by the end of the day. Well, he did it early. And he did it early, and it seems that he only wanted to speak on certain topics. I ain't saying that he's afraid to speak on the topics that he should have spoken on, but it seemed like he wanted to throw bones a couple of in the direction of Trump and his co-defendants, and a couple of in the other direction at Fannie Willis and Nathan Waite. But we clearly know that it seemed like somebody got at him. Boy, the politics in this situation are ever so deep. And I was just thinking that we were probably going to get a disqualification. But it wasn't really seeming like just a, dis a disqualification was coming. Especially after... He dismissed six of Trump charges and then following dismissing the six of Trump charges, you know, he basically saying, hey, Fannie Willis, you can stay on the case as long as you get rid of Nate. It's a bad look. This decision was very weak. Keeping politics out of the law. It ain't what happened here. And like I say, I'm not even sure if somebody got at him, but it's one of those situations where when you're trying to appease the Trump people and then you're trying to appease the non-Trump people, you end up in a situation like this. And this right here is going to go down in history. It's probably one of the worst decisions ever. $1,000 in cash where you laid your head at night so that you would dip out and there would be no record of it, correct? That's not what I'm telling you, sir. Well, that's not... That's not at all what I'm telling you. What I'm telling you is that throughout the course of my life, I have always kept cash in my house. That cash has ranged from times, you know, my father would probably be ashamed of this because he would say it should be more. But that, time, that cash at times has ranged from $500 to maybe $9,000. And he, he would be like, that is not what I told you to do. Um, I've always had that amount of money. What I've told you is that when I travel, you do better negotiating when you travel. If you have cash, you can, you go to get the cab. They say, oh, we're going to charge you 300 for the day. Well, I got American cash. Will you take it for 150? And so it's my practice to take money when I travel. We're not talking about a whole lot of money. We're going to the Bahamas. 1,500 in cash is in my pocket or at the most 2,500. Belize was actually probably the most money I've ever taken. And it was taken because it was a big deal. My 50th birthday sucked. His 50th birthday, it sucked. It was terrible. No. Your Honor, and so I'd like to get I, back to, to some questions here. I'm, I'm trying to answer it. it would help if we... so, so let's...